Lisa Dum reuniting with the man she last saw when she was 19 years old. Then, as now, she credits him with saving her life. No, you did it. <laughs> Without you, would would not have been here. You here? That's the main thing. That's all we ask for. Yeah. yeah. In 1978, Lisa and 50 other Vietnamese refugees were fleeing communism after the fall of Saigon. But they got lost in the South China Sea, 33 adults and 18 children, adrift on this fishing boat, low on fuel and hope. How dire was the situation? Many ships passed by and didn't rescue us. But death would not be their destiny, thanks to a man who was chief mate on this container ship, George Peterson. I'm the captain's right-hand man. He told me to go down on the boat, tell them they can have all the food and all the water, but we really can't take them out. But George insisted on bringing them all on board, prepared to accept any consequences. What made you think, we can't just give them food and water, we need to rescue them? And any human being can see that if somebody needs help, you give them help. On Trong, now an attorney for the city of Los Angeles, and his brother Van were four and nine at the time. But I do remember seeing for the first time um, huge men with blue eyes, big muscles, like literally carrying us, you know, from the little boat up, up, up to the ship. That decision that he made changed everything for us. For years, George tried to find the 51 people on that boat, but it wasn't until a neighbor in Seattle asked if she could help by looking up a name on the list of refugees that George kept. That was the breakthrough. It started with Min Nguyen, the first of the refugees on the boat who have reconnected with George. Many of them, like Lon Trong, wanting to make him proud. I became a social worker. I want to give back to the community to help other people like George has inspired me to do. Now 88, George is still hoping to find the 23 people he has yet to reunite with. How important is it for you to try to meet all of the people that were on that little fishing boat? I would love to know where they are. Especially the kids. We are the kids today. They were stuck. Yes. That's your dad. Yes. <laughs> Until then, gratitude. You were the right person in the right place and the right time. Thank you. And unending love. George! <laughs> I love that giggle. George, incredibly humble about what he did that day in 1978. But if you ask him what he is most proud of, He'll say it's the lives those refugees have created for themselves in America. So many of them have gone on to lead extraordinary lives. Attorneys, biologists, successful entrepreneurs, they've really made the most of their second chances. And you think about that, it truly is the embodiment of the American dream. Yeah, yes. but what's yeah, striking, yeah. you know, is that so many people in your story there, they were so young at the time of, of yeah. the rescue, but they have such vivid memories of the day. You know, it's remarkable because some were as young as four, nine, and the thing that really stands out to a lot of them, which I thought was funny, is the food. Yeah. Because it was wow. like the first time they'd tasted an apple uh, or a hot dog or mm -hmm. Kool-Aid. And so, that, like, you know those sensory details yeah. when you experience something, it comes back to you. And I remember my parents, they would say they always remember tasting cheesecake for the first time oh, when we wow. came to America mm -hmm. in Oregon and our sponsor family, you know, presented so them with a cheesecake. And I know you were saying it's his mission to find out what happened to everyone on the boat. How's it going? So since this story started airing, he's getting some traction. We're getting emails, people reaching out saying, wait, I, I think I recognize someone in that photo. So wow. we've not been able to confirm anything yet, but that's that's really what we're hoping for, that we can help George. He's 88 years old. He would love to know what happened to everybody on that boat. Wow. Here's the thing. You mentioned the embodiment of the American dream, those folks being the embodiment. Vicky Wynn's also the embodiment of the American dream as well. So. Well, that story is very close to my heart. As a boat person myself yeah. and my family came here, um, and it was the kindness of strangers who really helped us get a start in America. And look wow. at Something, you now. <laughs> yes. we need to remember. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very grateful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.